video. Yes. Special meeting of the South San Antonio Independent School District Board of Presidents will come to order. The date is uh, November 29th, uh, 2023, the time is 6 p.m. Uh, Ms. Martinez, roll call, please. Yes, sir. Ernesto Ariano Jr. Present. Cindy Ramirez. Here. Shirley Ibarra. Joe Araiza. Here. Abel Martinez Jr. Here. Homer Flores Jr. Manuel Lopez. Present. At this time, I'll invite all to participate in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Please join me in prayer. Lord, hear our prayer to be in the midst of our meeting today. Guide our minds and hearts so that we work for the good of our community. Help us put our plans into practice as we grow in peace and understanding with one another. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll move on to uh, a <coughs> citizen to be heard. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez. Uh, well, they spent the day out. Oh, okay. That's the and uh, three minutes. But you know, whatever. Somebody just gave me a hand signal when I was winding down. Good evening. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening. And uh, first, thank you for making the effort to come and host the meeting here on this side of the bridge. Uh, but we all know that there's a deliberate intent. There has been. Uh, you think that you're going to be able to point to an empty cafeteria here and say the community members did not show up when, in fact, there's been a deliberate intent to ensure that they don't show up. Well, fortunately for them, I am here as their spokesperson. Unfortunately for them, we have a gentleman that applied to be appointed to represent them. We have an elected person that campaigned and got elected to represent them. This board approved the redistrict fee to add an additional trustee to represent 78242, yet none of you have done anything to advocate for West Campus High School. What it took was one of the most caring group of people I have ever met in my entire life to see the inadequate facilities from across town that we can't even see in our own backyard. This right here, if in fact the numbers here are accurate, is your failure. This is proof that you are failing. That's why I didn't support your hiring. You are not qualified to be a superintendent. The proof is in the pudding because there's begs quite, there's tons of questions that are begged to be asked here. You talk about decrease, decrease enrollment, which is this gentleman's favorite topic here, but what have we done to increase enrollment? Prior to Ms. Sandejo's departure, she was doing everything she could, and we did move the needle and increase enrollment, which we all know generates revenue, right? But what has this group, what have you done to do that very thing? Nothing. Again, a deliberate intent to dissuade, discourage, and, all, and in all reality, just squash everyone that lives on this side of town, even though they pay just the same amount of taxes, even more, right? We have a board member who has aspirations to aspire to rise to the county level, and in a very live voice stream talks about taking back governance and taking back budget, making decisions, but yet hands them those very items, hands them right over here. Doesn't make any sense. God help us at the county level, right? We can't even walk across the street here and talk about inequities, yeah, that you created. Everything that's here and everything that you see has happened on your watch. You have done absolutely nothing, and this board has done absolutely nothing, especially the three representatives here that are, represent West Campus High School, have done nothing, nothing to ensure that those kids over there are getting the resources that they need. What's the answer to loss of revenue, right? I'm not a small business owner, but all I have is, is MCRD San Diego Recruit Depot training and education, but I know enough to know that if I'm not making money and I need money, I need to generate some. And the number one item on the list is increased enrollment, right? 
we have done nothing. You're going to do what you want to do. And I'm leaving as soon as my comments are over because my presence here doesn't matter. But I felt compelled to come and at least speak on behalf of my community. Am I done? Uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. 20 seconds. Uh, but this is this blood is on your hands. And now that the Texas Education Agency is involved, that you guys have the keys over. I, I read the signed agreement. <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely no sense why you would do something like that. God help us. What I do know is that the kids over here deserve just as much. These numbers are here, and, and they are what they are. Whether they're accurate or not, we'll find out. Right? Well, I don't know what snapshot was today. I think our enrollment is higher than five and two over there. But look at the surrounding district that are that are three A. Right? Mind you, this is a three year plan where we only had ninth graders the first year. Right? So what do you expect the enrollment to be when we're sitting on our hands? Figure out a way to generate revenue. Figure out a way to increase enrollment. Every, every other district here is closing campuses. We don't need to follow suit. We need to capitalize on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, do we have any TA monitor remarks today, Dr. No, sir. Dr. Dick, thank you, sir. Uh, Superintendent remarks today? No, sir. And there are no board president remarks. So at this time, I'm going to turn this uh, district efficiency report over to uh, Mr. Isigiri. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Uh, really quick for the audience, uh, we do have copies of the presentation on paper should you wish to have a copy yourself. Uh, we are asking to hold off on the questioning to the end of the presentation. Uh, it is somewhat lengthy. There's a lot of information that we are uh, that we will be sharing. We'll have different staff coming up here uh, and sharing some specific uh, information as it pertains to their departments. But I'll go ahead and get us started. So this this report here, we, we did share the exact report. Um, to the board and to the community in October. Uh, I believe it was the 18th of October. Not much has changed. A lot of the data is the same. Uh, however, it's already been shared with our community. We felt compelled to share it uh, here uh, on this side of the district as well. So changing the slide. The presentation is, is broken up into four parts. Finances enrollment, facility capacity, and academic impact, right? These are the four key contributions of this presentation uh, and how they all impact the decisions that we need to make to make sure, number one, we get out of our de deficit, we address the issues of declining enrollment, and we maximize the capacity of our facilities. And of course, the inequities that we have, we need to stabilize them and make sure we're equal across the district, not only in just uh, K through fifth, but also in grades six through 12. Um, I will turn it over to Mr. Keeman. Uh, and again, he's gonna share his part. The first half of the presentation uh, does pertain to information, what we've done uh, since last year when our deficit was at 12, how we've got it to nine, where we stand uh, at this particular point. And the second half of the presentation, we'll talk about where we're still uh, needing to make some improvements in all of those four categories. So. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Kingman. Thank you, Mr. Izaguirre. Um, on your screen, I would like to present to you the 22-23 uh, financial overview, which is the financial for last year. So as you can see, um, last year we presented to the board the same slide, which shows the $12 million deficit. And uh, as I just want to point out, that part of the $12 million deficit includes the $3 million from the health insurance fund. So um, uh, if you, here we go. Um, move on to the 23-24 financial. As you can see, the deficit has been reduced to nine and a half million. And I would like to point out that um, the, the, the reason that it didn't reduce further, even though we consolidated three campuses is because of, uh, first of all, the decline enrollment and also, um, the fact that um, we increased um, in payroll to catch up with uh, the districts that uh, surrounding South Sand. Uh, however, you know, uh, compared to last year, as you can see, we did decrease our deficit from 12 to 9.5 million. Now, uh, in the 9.5 million, 
uh, it does include the two and a half million uh, from the health insurance. And the plan to wipe down the deficit from the health insurance plan is to switch, um, it, to, it to propose to the board to switch our insurance from self funded to uh, be a part of the uh, uh, be a part of the teacher retirement system uh, health insurance from the state of Texas. Um, if we do that, uh, the two and a half million dollar deficit from the health insurance would be wiped out, and uh, the deficit for the gen, gen, general fund would be uh, two and a half million dollar less. Um, so as you can see, um, last last fiscal year to address the deficit, we use an ESSA fund. And uh, for 23-24, uh, the ESSA fund is no longer there for the district to, uh, to utilize to address the deficit. And for that reason, as you can see, the arrow point out from the saving account, which is our fund balance, uh, to address the deficit for 23-24, we will have to actually dip into the fund balance uh, to cover the $9.5 million deficit. Um, so um, the question that uh, we all want to know is how did we address the deficit last year? How did we reduce it to nine and a half million uh, this year? So as you can see, um, we maximize all of the federal and state fundings uh, to address the instructional staffing needs in, instead of increase uh, the position in the general fund. Uh, we also use the ESSA fund to address the deficit for last year. Uh, from the non-payroll side, which is for for, con, for contracted services, for supplies, dues, and fee, we reduced uh, nine percent across the board, and also um, we 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 had a uh, two years uh, plan to realize all the saving from the consolidated uh, plan from last year. So. 23-24 is the first year, and next year we will uh, fully realize the, uh, the saving from the consolidation plan from 22-23. Uh, However, with that being said, um, we still have some challenge at the district. So the first one is, even though we reduce the deficit to nine and a half million, we still have the deficit. Um, the self-funded cost is still higher than prior to COVID. Uh, that means that even after COVID, you know, uh, the, the cost will not come down uh, to the level that we saw prior to, to, uh, to COVID-19. And for that reason, if we don't do anything about uh, the self-funded uh, insurance fund, then that means the deficit for, the, uh, for that particular fund is still will be continued in the future. So um, I, uh, but we do have the plan to address that um, in the near future. Um, the next thing that uh, we're still facing is our capacity uh, for our facility uh, is still below the optimum uh, level. And also we, we do have some aging facility in our district. Uh, the enrollment is still in the declining trend. And also, you know, uh, we definitely need to uh, keep increasing the compensation for uh, teacher and support staff to compete with the districts uh, sur surrounding uh, South Sand. And um, the most important thing is we definitely need to improve the academic per performance for the district because that's uh, the reason of why we are here. Um, moving to the enrollments, I, I would like to introduce Mr. Rocha, uh, our executive director of operation. He would uh, cover the enrollment trend and also the capacity for our building. Good evening, members of the board, uh, members of the community. Um, these uh, next couple of slides are in particular just looking at current enrollment um, and also the utilization that we have at our the capacity we have at our campuses. As you can see, we did a 10-year snapshot going back to 2014-2015 uh, school year. Uh, during this time, uh, from 2014 with 9,960 kids, to current date, we have lost 2,622 students during that time. Uh, that's a 26% decrease of uh, student enrollment over that 10-year period. So it's it's, uh, it's it's pretty startling. You can see that that downward trend. Um, there's not a whole lot that you know. Basically, you can see what uh, what's in front of you there. Um, the next slide here is uh, is is very similar slide that we showed last year um, when we made these presentations. We talked about the 2022-2023 uh, uh, capacities 
as you can see, that was the capacities that during that time frame, as we move uh, one year forward, the uh, the campuses that are grayed off, grayed out, are the campuses that have been closed. So we no longer are counting uh, Kindred uh, in our overall uh, optimum uh, capacity or overall utilization, and we're no longer counting Athens Elementary. So you can see the biggest increases we've had uh, were at Benavides, where we increased that capacity or that student uh, enrollment to 100, by 145. Um, also, the uh, Hutchins Elementary and at Palo Alto. The majority of those campuses uh, had increases because of the, uh, the student transfers out of Kindred. Um, ideally, you want to stay uh, in the uh, utilization and the 80% market. As you can see, for the most part, our elementaries are, are fairly healthy. Uh, we do have uh, the, the smallest ones at Madeline and Armstrong uh, at 64%, uh, pretty much both. And then uh, Benavides, it is a very large campus, uh, although it's at 70%, uh, nearly 70%. Um, these are the elementary campuses. And I'm gonna go now to the secondary campuses, uh, which will include the middle schools and high schools. As you can see, we have the, the yellow, the yellow uh, student delta is showing the decreases. We've had, we had a, a large decrease at uh, South Side High School of 171 students. Um, West Campus had uh, minus 18. Uh, from last school year, and uh, Dwight and Shepard uh, had had students also minus 12 and minus 65 for Shepard. As you can see, the uh, the utilization specifically at the, the, the high schools are in the 60s, uh, and we have Dwight Middle School is a is a fairly large campus with cap capacity of uh, 1,373. Uh, currently, is at at about 30 percent uh, capacity as one of our one of our lowest ones. Um, the next slide here is just overall district uh, capacity. So as you can see, last year our optimal capacity, basically all the seats that we have available um, and the it, throughout the, the district for the 22-23 uh, school year, our optimal capacity was uh, 14,056 students. Now you notice uh, we've gone down uh, to the 23-24 school year with our optimal capacity is uh, 12,178. So just to just to uh, remind everybody, the reason we've gone down in optimal capacity is because we did close three schools, so we have less seats available. Uh, so you can see um, our utilization went up by sixty uh, to sixty percent. So we went up approximately five percent. Even doing that, we still lost five hundred and twenty-six students, but we still uh, were able to, to uh, optimize our, our our campuses. So it's basically just showing that you know we we, we saw the downward trend, we made the, the correct adjustments. Uh, and we are utilizing our buildings uh, at, uh, more appropriately. And I will now pass it over to Ms. Marcia to talk about some program activity. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board and members of the community. Last year, as we assessed the needs of the district with regards to academics, we focused on four areas of concern response to intervention, fine art opportunities, STEM and career opportunities, and academic support for our campuses at all levels. I'll begin with response to intervention. Response to intervention is how schools address students who are struggling with their learning. There's three tiers. Tier one is, your, uh, is, the, in, is the curriculum and the information that all students receive. When students are struggling with tier one, they move into tier two. Which, meet, which includes small group interventions. If a student continues to struggle, they move into tier three, which includes either one-to-one -one intervention or a group of two to three students. Last year, we had one district-based person assisting with the RTI process and tracking student data. This year, we have added an interventionist to all eight elementary campuses. This interventionist works with students on a daily basis. Fine arts. K through eight fine art opportunities were specific to two campuses last year. This year we added fine arts integration at elementary campuses through the Cultivar Grant, which is in conjunction with Texas A&M San Antonio, as well as the Tobin Center. Kindergarten teachers from each elementary campus meet monthly to learn the different strategies and take them back to their campuses. At the middle school level, we added a band and mariachi program to all three middle schools. STEM and career, as with fine arts last year, STEM or career-based opportunities were campus-specific. 
This year, eSports, vision coding, and a STEM-based Project Lead the Way program was added to all three middle schools. Academic support is the area of concern where we as a district have made the most changes. Last year, the district had one English academic coordinator and one math academic coordinator to help teachers with K through 12 curriculum. We did not have representation for either science or social studies. This year, the district added academic coordinators and specialists to all core content, which includes English, math, science, social studies specific to elementary and secondary curriculum. Seeing the need for the position, we repurposed an administrative position to be an academic dean to each high school last year. This provides each campus with one administrative position to oversee the curriculum and track student academic achievement. This year, the district extended the same position to the middle schools by adding an assistant principal to each campus and having their main task on campus be centered around academics. Bilingual instructional coaches were added to make sure all of our curriculum is available to our teachers and students in both English and Spanish. All positions added were either repurposed or have been funded from grants or federal funds. So basically the information that was shared in those previous slides gives us a recap of what we've done and where we currently are. In a nutshell, right, we still have some remaining efficiencies, right? We're still dealing with the deficit. Although it went from 12, we're still at nine and a half million for the school year. We do not have ESSER anymore, meaning that the nine and a half million that we have to cover at the end of the year is coming from our fund balance, which is our savings account. The declining enrollment, you saw the trend. It continues to decline, and, and we have to forecast our funding based on, on, on that trend. Building capacity, we went from 55 to 60%. Optimal is 80 to 85%. We're still way off track, meaning we have too many buildings compared to the number of students that we serve. Uh, programs, with the closures of, of last year's schools, uh, we, we were able to, to stabilize the inequities in pre-K through eighth. However, we're gonna demonstrate and show you that we still have some inequities in grades nine through 12. So we're gonna break down those four categories one more time on, on, on how we're spending our money, where our enrollment stands, and where our inequities are in grades nine through 12. So Mr. Keeman will give us a, a breakdown of our financial data in grades nine through 12, which was our two high schools, South San Antonio High School and South San Antonio West. Mr. Keeman. Thank you, sir. Uh, so let us uh, zoom in to the grade nine to 12, uh, which is the grades that we have uh, in equity in the district. So um, let's um, look at South San High School first. So as you can see, the total budgeted amount for South San High School is at 12.6 million. Um, the, the, the reason that it is much higher than West Campus, which I will show uh, in the next slide, because the total number of students is 1,614. And uh, the cost per student is 7,000 is 7,847. However, due to the fact that um, 269 students uh, is, tra is tra traveling each day, half day from West Campus to South San, if, if we adjust for that particular number, the cost per student uh, for South San is actually 7,243. Uh, moving on to West Campus. As you can see, uh, the total budget for West Campus without the capital outlay, which is uh, without the capital improvement, is 4.2 million. Um, and the reason that it is less than South San is because uh, West Campus uh, only has uh, five, 502 students. And the cost per student uh, is at 8,432, which is already higher than um, South San High School. But if you adjust for the 269 students that are traveling from West Campus to South San High School half day for CTE classes, the total uh, cost per student uh, for West Campus is actually 11,517. So to just recap what I present to the community and to the board, as you can see, uh, we have the unbalanced expenditure uh, and 
we uh, and this much I will also talk about the inadequate offerings of educational services. But for Cospo student, as you can see, South Sand High School Cospo student is seven thousand two hundred forty-three, and West Campus High School Cospo student eleven thousand five hundred and seventeen. Meaning that we, uh, the Cospo student for West Campus is actually higher with less uh, pro program and extracurricular um, for for West Campus compared to South Sand. And in addition, I would like to mention the uh, maintenance tax note, which is basically a loan, for, uh, a loan that uh, the district took out from the, for the general fund. And um, the, the, the reason for that particular loan is for to improve and to renovate West Campus High School. So after uh, we finish the cafeteria at West Campus High School, the current available balance for that particular loan is uh, 3.6 million. However, uh, to completely build our West Campus, it will take uh, the district uh, close to 13 million. Uh, so without the capacity right, right now to borrow from the uh, bond side and also with the deficit, um, you, uh, the district will will not have the, the capacity to take additional loan to to fulfill uh, this uh, 13 million dollar requirement. Um, so uh, moving on to the en enrollment trend from pre-K to fifth grade, I, I would like to introduce Mr. Joel Gaines, our executive director of curriculum and instruction. Thank you, Mr. Kingman. Uh, as Mr. Rocha showed us earlier, our district trend over the last 10 years, um, we're not going to try to drill down to what it looks like at each individual layer, layer for the uh, pre-K through five, the middle school, and then the high school. As we see here, you can see that um, we, we actually started a decline in the 2015-2016 school year. Uh, we did see it start to level out around 2021-2022. Um, and if you can see from this year to that year, we're actually up a little bit, but um, we're down from the year prior. So it's kind of flatlined starting around the year 21-22. When we move that to our middle school, you can see the difference here is that we started going down in around 2017, 2018. So as we lost those elementary students, it took a while for that trend to move up towards the middle school. Um, we have yet to see it flatline. So we might, see, you know, we, we can anticipate uh, seeing a couple more years where this could continue um, to, to decrease as well. And then as we look at our, our high school numbers, the high school numbers are the same way. You can actually see that we were going up there for a couple years and we started uh, to decrease in the 2019-2020 um, year and we have not quite uh, seen it start to flatten out. So the high school will have a, a few more years till we see those elementary numbers uh, catch up to the, to the high school. Um, with that being said, like I said, the decline for a couple of years at the high school level, um, I'd just like to circle back uh, to the um, building capacity uh, that we showed uh, previously for our high schools. When we look at the high school numbers, uh, we were at that 62.35% um, for the total utilization. Uh, but when we look at the actual utilization for um, South, uh, for West Campus, for those 269 students that, that move over, that number does uh, drastically go down to about 49%. So I will turn this now over to Hold Ms. Okay. I like it. Can you go back two slides? or the high school slide, the trend. I'd like to make a notation that and you can see the decline, and this is enrollment just for grades 9 to 12. The, the administration, the board at the time, decided to open up West Campus in 1920. West Campus originally closed back in 2010, 2008, and we've already started to see a decline. The board decided, or the administrator decided to open up in 1920 with less kids or with a decline in enrollment. So there was really, I'm not sure what the data was showing that demonstrated that we need to open up another facility, but we basically started to see that decline since the day that decided to open up West Campus. Ms. Marchant. The challenges I'm going to speak to for grades 9 through 12 revolve around two basic tiers, duplication of services and an imbalance between what's being offered at both campuses. 
Enrollment in career and technical education courses is a major component of our CMR accountability, college and career ready, military readiness, and that would be the state accountability. Based on student course selection for this year, we planned for 269 West Campus High School students to take CTE courses at South San Antonio High School. Students are shuttled between the two high schools in the morning, at lunchtime, and after school. So this goes back to what Mr. Kingman and Mr. Gaines said. Um, at any given time, West Campus is operating under, um, under their, their normal enrollment. It's 269 students are shuttling to South San Antonio High School for CTE courses. Due to staffing and facility requirements, all CTE courses are taken at South San Antonio High School. Students at both high schools have the opportunity to earn an associate's degree from Palo Alto College. This is a duplication of service. Through our memorandum of understanding with Palo Alto College, the district can offer both an early college and P-TECH opportunity to two, 600 total students, 150 students in each grade level, nine through 12. We currently have 372 early college high school students at South San Antonio High School in grades nine through 12 and 49 early college high school students at West Campus High School in grades nine through 11. So combined, we still do not hit the 600 mark. 21 students in the P-TECH program at West Campus High School in grades 9 through 11. West Campus High School is a designated P-TECH campus. Should South San Antonio High School students be interested in the P-TECH program, they would need to transfer to West Campus High School for this opportunity. The district currently offers the following advanced academic courses, honors, pre-advanced placement, advanced placement, dual credit, and dual enrollment, such as on-ramps. Both pre-advanced placement and advanced placement corporate courses follow curriculum purchased through the National College Board platform. Dual credit courses can only be taught by those certified teachers with either a master's degree in the content taught or a master's degree and 18 graduate hours in the content that they will teach. Dual enrollment courses follow curricular guidance from an institution of higher learning. The district offers science on-ramps courses with a partnership with the University of Texas. This is another area where we have a duplication of services. In total, the district offers 60 advanced academic courses at both high schools, with 23 of those courses being duplicates, 40 at South San Antonio High School and 26 at West Campus High School. The breakdown of those 60 courses is as follows. Eight honors, eight pre-AP, 13 advanced placement, 27 dual credit, and four on-ramps. Four hundred forty-eight students participate in the 10 athletic programs at South San Antonio High School, and 110 students participate in the seven athletic programs at West Campus High School. While we offer multiple sports at both campuses, the imbalance is at West Campus High School. Many of our student athletes play multiple sports, thereby increasing their risk of injury. Student organizations is another area where we see an imbalance between both high schools. Both high schools offer the following organizations, and was, those would be the ones in the middle. Band, mariachi, cheer, dance, palm squad, National Honor Society, class clubs, student council, UIL academics. Being a larger campus with more faculty and sometimes specific faculty such as CTE provides South San Antonio High School the opportunity to offer more organizations to their students. At this time, I will turn it over to Rita Uresti, our Executive Director of Human Resources. Thank you, Ms. Marcha. Good evening, board members. Uh, tonight, I'll be presenting um, how South San ISD compares to the surrounding districts in regards to competitive pay. Um, if you recall, this slide was presented at the last uh, community meetings, and so this is the 22-23 data. Um, if you recall, South San ISD um, compared to our surrounding uh, districts, which are Southwest, Harlandale, Southside, San Antonio, and Edgewood, uh, we ranked either fifth or sixth in regards to teacher pay, custodian pay, food service pay, and bus driver pay. 
When we look at this year's data, the 23-24 data, we did make some improvement. Um, you can see in teacher pay, we went up from uh, ranking fifth to ranking fourth. Um, and also bus driver pay, we uh, increased as well from uh, ranking fifth to fourth. In custodian pay and food service pay, we remained the same um, as uh, six out of six uh, surrounding school districts. Um, although we did make some improvement um, in competitive pay, and as you recall, um, you all uh, approved a 4% increase uh, this summer with additional increases for custodian food service and bus driver. You can see that we still are lagging behind the other surrounding school districts in, uh, in regards to competitive pay. Um, we do know that, that uh, we want to be the most competitive um, in regards to pay. We do know that um, competitive pay uh, does allow for a higher applicant pool. A higher applicant pool does also allow our um, hiring committees to hire um, the best um, teachers and staff for our students. And so we do have the difficult, um, uh, the difficult uh, task to tackle the deficit, but also keep mind to um, a competitive pay for our employees. And so um, I'd like to turn over the presentation to Mr. Izgiri so he can uh, sum it up. So, so that kind of leads us uh, back to that slide that we shared earlier, right? We're still faced with a nine and a half million dollar deficit in which we're going to have to dip into our fund balance to make sure that we come out at the end of the year. That's out of our fund balance, out of our savings account. No more ESSER. 25% of our enrollments in the last 10 years have gone elsewhere to other districts uh, around our community. Our building capacity, we're still at 60%. While we made gains, in reducing our footprint uh, last year, uh, our declining enrollment doesn't help uh, with our remaining facilities. <clears throat> Again, we've made ground in, in servicing our pre-K through eighth grade students. Uh, you guys saw the presentation, you saw the slide where we're inequitable in grades nine through 12. And again, what Ms. Uresi just shared, uh, even though we've had a raise the last two years, we're still either fourth or sixth place in the fourth groups of, of, uh, of the pay groups. Thank you. So these are the task to do something or do nothing, right? These are our only two options at this particular time. To tackle the deficit, the inequity in programs, pay and compensation, uh, and, and building capacities. We have a, a high school campus with a capacity of 3,000 kids. We have 21 high school students in grades 9 through 12 district-wide. Okay, so our options are do nothing and we continue the path that we're on and see our deficit continue to grow or we do a consideration to consolidate both South San Antonio High School and West Campus High School. That concludes our presentation um, this evening. I'm going to open up the floor for any questions. I'll direct the qu any questions from the board first, and then we can open it up uh, to the community. Members of the board, any questions? I know you've heard this presentation, uh, but we're willing to answer any questions that might come forward. Uh, I have a, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I, I just have a couple of comments, so bear with me. I was writing some notes. So uh, just I just want to also bring some stuff to the table, too, as a uh, one of the gentlemen was talking, it reminded me of some stuff, just uh, some facts. Um, like uh, Mr. Izaguita said, West Campus closed in 2008. I know because my son was a student here at West Campus. And at, uh, around 2009, 2010, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we passed the bond. And at that time, uh, what we wanted to do was ensure that now that all the students were gonna be able to have a new South Sound school, to be built with all the bells and whistles and make sure or ensure that all the students would be provided with the same programs. At that time, we, we felt that we were meeting the, the needs of the entire district. Um, the gentleman who spoke earlier, Mr. Rodriguez, what he failed to mention was that he was part of the board that opened West Campus back in 2020 when there was a decline in enrollment without a plan and care as to where the money was going to come from. So that's when he should have asked God to help us. Uh, those discussions <clears throat> have brought us to this point that we're in right now. 
money spent to try and redo West Campus as it used to be was easier said than done. What he didn't say was that he did not care that all those students did not get options that could have been possible. <clears throat> those were adult choices that did not take the, uh, the needs of the students, future needs into consideration. So if there is blame, it starts there. I don't wanna close West Campus but I do want our students to have the best choices when it comes to their education. Unfortunately, I'm in a position where I have to support both groups of West Campus, those who are okay as it is, and those who want options for their education. The board that opened closed campuses caused the aftermath that we are looking at and facing today. You know, it's not it's not easy to sit here and be listening to what we're listening to and be faced with the challenges that we're facing because things there was a domino effect to the fact that these <clears throat> campuses were already closed. And I know because I lived through it with my son. It was a hard time. Did we like it? No, we didn't like it. It was a diff it's something different had happened. You know, there was a flood, so there was other things that, that came about. However, we learned we had to learn to adapt and live with it, you know. As as a result, we were able to build a better high school for all the students. Why West Campus opened, I don't know. I wasn't part of it. I can't answer the question. The only thing I can tell you is that it's easy for anybody to come up here and blame us and, and point the finger at three of us because we represent or we're the lack of representing West Campus. It's hard to do it when they put us in a position like this. You know, so if we're going to talk about facts, let's just bring all the facts to the table. You know, because that, that this is true. I'm not here to lie. I mean, yes, we want to support the kids, but the best way we can support them is to make sure that they have the best education that South San Antonio ISD can provide them. That they become good citizens for the future and proud citizens to have graduated from here. You know, my, my son winded up graduating from South San. You can graduate from West Campus, but you know what? If that's okay, you know we we learn to live with it. So I just I'm just here to let everybody know that these are not easy decisions. We are going to be face, faced with a hard decision, but I don't want people to think that we don't support West Campus because we do support this district. And you know, some of us live in this district. We've lived here all our lives, so it's hard for me to sit here and have someone say that I don't care. It's not true. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Board member. Should be on. Um, <clears throat> I have a little cold, so I might sound a little muffled, but um, I also, um, everything that uh, Cindy said about our district and up here in the hill, um, you know, I also support it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to see a, a high school close uh, but again you know we're left in, uh, in a situation where either we're going to go further down or we're going to try to figure something out um, i know that uh, back when it was closed i wasn't even part of it either uh, or when it was open i wasn't part of it either so um, <clears throat> my thing is you know we are not to blame uh, this board is not to blame it's uh it, it was it was back then and you know I think uh, we do have a great administration and we have a great staff and the board members that are up here, you know, we do the best we can. Uh, we didn't ask to be with TDA, you know, that was a previous board, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I guess I, you know, I got appointed, but I wasn't one to, to come down and tackle and uh, be unsupportive of the South San ISD and the West Campus High School. I don't want the schools uh, to close. I really don't. You know, and you know, we're going to continue talking and seeing what, what we can do. But you know, one of the things that I want everybody to know, the community to know, that I'm not here to close this campus. I'm not here to to do anything that's not supportive to our children. You know, we're here as a board to support our children. And now that we've been dealing with TA, uh, they've been helping us to correct the mistakes that past board members have made. You know, so. Uh, I think we are moving forward. We're moving forward in the right direction, but you know, I 
you know, I just want the community to know that I do support West Campus, just like I support South San ISD, but I don't want, I really don't want West Campus to close down. Uh, that's, that's my district, you know, I'm in Sims district, and you know, we don't want that, you know, but, you know, it's, it's hard when we're in a big deficit, and we have, a, <clears throat> and we also have a TA with us, and if we don't do something, they're going to do something. You know, so either we try to to manage it ourselves or it will take over. You know, and some of these things that we, we've done in the summer and all these classes that we've gone through is not just for nothing. You know, we, we're, we've been doing it uh, since I got here in you know, June. You know, and I have no, I'm not against it. You know, I want the best for the district. But I, you know, I just want the community to know that I'm not here to 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 close with campus. I support it, you know. But you know, I, I just want to also tell you that we this is not the board that did it, you know. And so um, I just wanted to comment. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lopez. If I could uh, make a, a comment uh, in regards to both of their comments, I, I believe it was the 18-19 school year. Uh, that the district, it was the last time the school district passed a balanced budget, zero deficit. Since then, uh, the deficits have gone from either two and a half million a year up to 11 and 12 last year, as you know. Um, and it wasn't because of just West Campus, right? At the time, uh, the district the administration, the board decided to open up not just West Campus, but also Athens Elementary, uh, Kaysen Elementary, and West Campus Elementary at a cost of over $20 million. Over $20 million to relocate district office out of there and shuffle everybody else around. That is a lot of money that was in our fund balance or other sources that we had or the loans or whatever they could have been, but at a cost of $20 million. And since that 2018-19 school year, the district has been unable to pass a balanced budget. I mean, we're working the best we can with Keeman and his team and everybody here to see where we can reduce that deficit and still be competitive uh, in hiring staff. It's very challenging when we're still facing nine and a half million. We need to make some decisions. I know there is, we have a board of trustees that don't want to close any schools down. We don't want to close any schools down, but we have to do something. And right now, I really do feel that we're not giving our students here at West Campus High School the best opportunity that we can. We have a school that is offering and can sit 3,000 students and it's sitting half empty and we're technically busing everybody across the bridge to get those services at a school that they probably should be sitting in already or they were sitting in already. Uh, yes, it's a difficult decision, very difficult uh, because it impacts not our students but our, their families and every, their siblings and everybody else. But that's the decision, that's where we're at, that's where we're at right now at this particular time. And we're gonna have to have make a recommendation uh, in December because this is time sensitive. As you recall, I made this recommendation last January, last January, and it came back up in March. And I was the one that withdrew it because it was too late to put our staff, our students, and our families in a situation to consolidate at that time because we weren't going to have the time to put him in the best position to be successful. But here we are. I did say that we were going to bring it back up for discussion. And here we are discussing it. We've discussed this many times. We shared this presentation in October. But the time is now to make a decision. And my recommendation will come December 20th at the board meeting. Mr. Ruppis. <laughs> all right so my main concern well i got a question it's obvious what y'all gonna do y'all gonna close west campus all right i'm not saying i'm for it i'm not saying i'm against it it's obvious i see it what are you gonna do with the building how are we gonna you didn't do this neither did some of these or i'm not sure who was here who was how are we gonna get some of that money back that we spent in here what are we gonna do with the building <clears throat> If, if you recall some of our previous presentations, I, I believe it was at our first district efficiency report, most of our money is tied into personnel. I want to say, what's that percentage, Tony? 82% of our overall budget is tied in personnel. 
what, what happened was our money was spread out over two many schools. What, what I'm saying is you said 20 million. How much was put into West Campus? Oh, individually to West Campus? Yes. Oh, do you have that number? That's what we're talking about, right? West Campus. Eight to, eight, to ten, eight to 10 million. Okay, so in how many years was it open? Four, three. Oh, they have a senior class. This is the fourth year open. Okay, this is so fourth. that's what I'm saying. What's going to, so it wasn't usually, it wasn't whatever, but so what are we going to do about this money? Like it's lost, it's done? Yeah, that money's been expended already. So then what are you going to do with the property afterwards? Well, that, that's other discussions. There, there's two departments that are still there that we're, we weren't able to relocate. We still have transportation department that's there because we cannot move uh, the fueling stations, the wash barn, and everything else. We cannot relocate them. We have child nutrition because all their refrigerators and freezers are still there. They're still our, our, our central point. Uh, it wasn't reconfigured too much to reconvert, but we have not had those discussions at this time. The discussion that we need to have now is what are we going to do for our students at this particular time? Yes, the money and the deficit is a big thing, but right now our priority is to making sure that our students are put in the best situation. All right, well, I, okay, that's fine. I don't have a question. I just have a, a few comments to make. Uh, I was here back in 2010 when West Campus was closed. It was a hard decision back then. It's probably going to be a hard decision uh, this time around also. <clears throat> uh, we're sitting here today, like I said, uh, you know, it, 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 you can throw rocks at us and accuse us of all kinds of stuff, but the, the truth to the matter is that three or four years ago, maybe four or five years ago, uh, three, maybe four different superintendents highly recommended that we do not open these schools. They were told time and time again to the, the, the board at, the, at that time. Nobody listened. Three or four years later, today, here we sit, and it's now up to us to be the bad guys and take a vote, probably in December, to either keep it open or close the West Campus. Okay. So, like I said, we inherited this issue. We didn't create it. We, we're going to have to make it some hard decisions, and I'm, I'm okay with that. That's that's what we've got to let them do. Uh, it's easy to accuse, and it's easy to point fingers and all that when you're sitting back and uh, you created a problem and they use that. It's very easy to do that. I could do that all day if I wanted to. But since West Campus opened, well, I, I say West Campus, uh, all three schools open. Our enrollment has gone down. <coughs> our general fund has gone down. The only thing that's been, that's been keeping us alive is those extra funds. If it wasn't for that, these lights would have been off three years ago. Whether you want to admit it or not, that is a fact. Okay. If we continue on this trend where we are today, how many years do we have left in the general fund to be able to survive, Mr. King? Roughly. I know you can't give an exact amount. Sir, so, uh, it would be roughly two years. This is fact, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So, like I said, we're not sent here uh, closing schools because we have nothing better to do. We're trying to save the overall district. Sometimes you have to cut a limb to save the rest of the body. That's what we're doing today, and we're talking about this. Uh, this is this is not something that we like to do. This is something that we wanted to do. This is something we ran on or got elected to do. This is something we inherited. It's very important you understand that, okay? Because after the vote next month, uh, if we know how it goes, if, if, if we decide to close West Campus, we're going to be the bad guys. Everybody's going to say, "Yeah, y'all closed West Campus. Y'all was closed West Campus." The issue started five years ago when they didn't listen to superintendents back then who got paid to, to tell you what's best in, in the best interest of the district. Nobody listened. And today we're here because of board members who are not here anymore and didn't take the time to do the math and listen to the professionals. That's why we're here today talking about this. Right? I'm okay with being a bad guy. I've, 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 I've done it before. It, it's, it's, sometimes you got to do what's right for the district. Not, 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 not what's popular, but what's right. You have to remember that. Two different things, okay? Uh, these people, I commend them for bringing this to us today. We've talked, I've seen the same presentation eight or nine times. Uh, I understood it uh, on the first time. Most of us understand it as they go along. Some people will never understand it because they don't want to understand it. Okay? This is survival, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is not something we, we want to do. This is survival for South San ISD. Okay? 
I've lived all my life in this district. I'm 68 years old. Okay, I've been here all my life. The last thing I want to see is this district to go down the drain because of mismanagement of some people who are not here today. I have no problem coming up here and accusing us, but they made the mistakes back then. Those are mistakes that you know. If I tell you that the money's not there and and, and the uh, the uh, students aren't there and you still do it, I mean that, that just uh, I mean uh, there's no answer for that. But like I said, I just I just sit back and I've been listening to everybody talking, and we're defending ourselves, you know, that you know, and we shouldn't have to defend ourselves. We're, we're here trying to do the right thing because someone else did the wrong thing. That's what we're here for today. Okay. So like I said, uh, I commend you, Mr. Gary, for bringing us today. Your staff also. Uh, I want you to bring us a recommendation in December. We'll see how the, what the board decides to do. And uh, we don't need to know what could happen to these buildings because we haven't voted yet. After we vote, and depending on how the vote goes. If we decide to close this campus, then we'll ask you what you're going to do with the buildings. Okay? Because I think we're getting ahead of ourselves by asking that today. Okay? But like I said, I just thought I'd mention that. I know the press is here, they're going to run with this, but that's why I, I said it, and I meant what I said. You just get the facts right. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, great presentation again. So I just want to make a few comments. Um, I was going to ask a question, but Mr. Skiriuri gave me my answer for the $20 million, right? That was spent to reopen the four schools. $20 million is a lot of money, as you said. Um, when I was elected to, to be on this board in 2020, that was the first thing that I, that I realized is that we had uh, just opened a bunch of schools that had previously been closed, just not even five years before that. And um, and that was a question that I was asking, why? Why do we do that? Why do we put ourselves in a deficit? Uh, the previous superintendent was already trying to tackle that super, that deficit. Um, and like Mr. Lopez said, the superintendents that were here that made, uh, that tried to get the, the, the board to not go down the road that they went, they got replaced because they were bold enough to say that. They got replaced by that, by that board because they wanted, they were dead close. They wanted to open those schools. Um, so here we are, four years later, and we are gonna, probably gonna get a recommendation next month to, to close the fourth of the four schools that reopened, that were reopened four years ago. Plus, like I've been saying, um, to me, the, the, the end result of reopening, the, reopening those schools was another elementary school, Kindred, had to close down because of the deficit that we created for ourselves back then. Um, so I'm looking at the numbers and, and it just it just baffles me how we, how previous boards were able to convince themselves and rationalize the fact that um, we have a secondary high school, which is West Campus, with 502 students in it total but 54% of them go to South San for at least half the day. That leaves 230 some odd students to, to be at West Campus the whole time and not, not get the full benefits of a, of a, a fully working state-of-the-art high school like South San. South San is pretty still pretty much still a brand new school, right? With state of, I've seen them. I, my, my youngest son went to school at the new school, the whole time he was there at the new South San High School. And, and I, when when I went there for freshman orientation, I, I was blown away with the with the uh, the, the advantages that, that that high school received compared to when I was there. Um, and it just baffles me that certain board members that are not, as everybody's saying, are not here anymore, wanted to force the kids at West Campus to not be able to go to that school. It's obvious that half of them wanted to go to South Sam because half over half of them do, for at least half of the school year, uh, half of the day. So, $20 million, like I said, that's a lot of money compared to the nine, the $12 million deficit that we had last year, 9.5 that we have now. Had we not done that, then we wouldn't be, in my, in my opinion, we wouldn't have this issue. We would have been able to use $20 million to enhance the schools that we, that, that we had back then. Uh, the 13 schools that we had back then. Um, 
So it, it just, like I said, it, it's, it's um, the strategic, because I asked questions when I got here, why are we doing that? And, and the, the, the answer, consistent answer that I kept getting was, we'll build it and then the students will come. Well, the, the, the numbers still show that we're still in decline. There was not a single time during that time that they were trying to build and they will come using that, that phraseology. That that, even, that that worked. It works in Hollywood, but all it does is bankrupt a school, a school district. And it's pretty much, it's evident that, that that's where we're at right now. If it wasn't for Esser, like Mr. Lopez said, and, and we, Mr. Kingman had said before, if it wasn't for Esser, we would have had to tackle this three years ago. And, uh, or it would have been, or, or we would have a, a board of managers sitting here if it wasn't for Esser, because we would have run out of money. We would have spent would have blown those two years that, that Mr. King was talking about um, for the uh, the savings account. That would have been taken out. That, that would have been uh, used up by the second year that, that the schools were open again. Um, and TEA wouldn't have allowed, would not have allowed us to do that. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's not something that any of us want to do to close schools, but. They ne we shouldn't have been put in a situation where we have to make this decision. We should not have been in the situation where we were in January and then again in March to close three out of the four schools. And then now we have to close it. Now we're, we're, we're still in the deficit and, and we don't really have much of a choice. I mean, that, that, that's the honest answer. We don't have much of a choice because that's the choice that we were left with. So this, this board that's sitting here now is working hand in hand with the superintendent and his staff and with TEA to do what's right for the students. And, and in my view, at the high school level, why not have all the high school students go to the one high school, to, south, to the main high school, South Sand High School? It, it has all the advantages that, that, uh, that any parent would want in a high school. So let's just get this done. Pull off the band-aid and get it done. That's that's my opinion. Thank you. More members, any questions, comments? Mr. Lopez, I can turn it over to the community. If anybody has, if anybody in the community has any uh, questions, uh, come on in. Ms. Sandra, how are you? Doing well. Thank you all for coming to the second town. We live right across the street. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so good evening, board members, good evening, everyone else. Y'all are important to me. Um, so I'm, again, like I mentioned at one of the board meetings, I'm in a new, unique position because, one, my kids uh, go to West Campus. I'm a graduate of South Sand. I actually work at South Sand High School last year. So I kind of can see why parents are upset about closing West Campus, me being one of them. But I understand numbers don't lie. I'm like, like you said, sir, like we really don't have a choice, and it doesn't make sense to keep to keep the school open when, when the numbers are telling us otherwise. But um, me working as a teacher at South Sand last year, I, again, that was last year, I did not want my own son going to that school, even though I graduated from there. The reason was one, constant vaping, fighting, facilities issues, hall monitors, because we didn't have enough teachers, were being pulled to be substitutes. So there was all sorts of nonsense happening in the hallways. I was reporting it, I was doing facilities, uh, work orders, doing all that kind of stuff. I would walk around uh, hallways, I would see students on Chromebooks, no teacher, and I, I'm not lying, once in a great while I would actually see a teacher up giving instruction. If not, kids were like zombies on Chromebooks, it was like we were in COVID all over again. So with West Campus, that campus is actually smaller. When I did my walkthroughs or just kind of do my, uh, you know, just kind of teacher observation, teacher, teacher, uh, meet the teacher and everything like that. And when I just go over there just to kind of see what's going on, I didn't see any of that stuff going on. My son really likes it over there and he likes that the class sizes are small. So now I know why parents are kind of upset because going to the high school, it's a different animal. So if we do end up, or if you all do decide to shut down West Campus, Please make sure there is a plan in place on how to reintegrate the West Campus students to South Sand. <coughs> my sister was actually part of when the West Campus uh, flooded and everybody went to South Sand. There was all sorts of nonsense, all sorts of fighting. 
it was just a bad year. It was actually a bad couple of years. Um, and I remember that happening. And when the new school got built, I thought the intentions were to actually have everyone consolidated so we can all concentrate on all the good stuff happening in South Sand. Again, I wasn't here when West Campus opened, but you all kind of explained to kind of painted a picture of why that happened. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to give you all a uh, uh, idea of why this, the parents on this side are upset. And another thing that was brought up because of where we're located, this part of the South side or our district is expanding. So when we do have enough students and South Sand becomes overcrowded, will West Campus open again? Like, I don't know like how many years that would take or if that would even happen. Um, because again, we're part of that new community. And um, I know they pride themselves at being like the smaller school, but again, the numbers don't lie that it's not uh, fiscally responsible to keep it open. But anyway, I just wanted to share with you the reasons why some parents are hesitant to send the kids to the bigger high school because of just all the, the, the stuff, like the boots on the ground, like the teachers. I saw it, other teachers saw it. And then I know it was said um, with uh, teacher recruitment, with higher pay, that's part of it, but going back to a school, um, I'm not gonna lie, South San High School doesn't have the greatest reputation in San Antonio. I'm a product of it, I understand. And when I saw it, I was like, okay, I see why people are saying this, but if we concentrate all of our energies into that high school, we can make it great like it was. Like, I know it can. When I went to high school, I absolutely loved it. The South San it is now is not the South San myself and my husband graduated from, but I know we can be there again. Um, and again, it's not only the pay, it's just having a work environment where you don't have to deal with kids baking in the restroom every day, where you don't have to deal with kids skipping classes, where you don't have to be looking for a dang hall monitor because there's fights and there's nobody there to help you. Um, so that's like the real everyday stuff happening in the hallways. So I just kind of wanted to let y'all know that. Um, what else did I have to say? Um, as far as the money goes, that kind of stinks that we kind of lost the money, but it's a live and learn situation. And it really breaks my heart when you all call yourself the bad guys because y'all aren't the bad guys. Y'all are doing the best for what the district needs. And I know it's a hard position to be in and just know that you do have people that support you. And sometimes people do have to make those those, those decisions and that's just that's just the way it is. So y'all aren't bad guys, okay? Y'all are, are, are good people doing good things for our district. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Southern Anyone else from the audience? Are y'all done? Yes, that concludes our presentation. <laughs> At this time, I'll take a motion to adjourn our members. Adjourn, all in favor say aye. Aye. 709. Mm-hmm.